Hey, hey Crosspoint Cross family. family! It's Catlin and Jared here. We miss you guys so much and we are praying for y'all. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, but first let's go ahead and worship the Lord together. Puts 
Sends the Holy Spirit. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. Before Jesus went to heaven, he told them to stay in Jerusalem until God sent the gift he promised. See ya. So after Jesus went to heaven, the apostles stayed in Jerusalem along with the other people who believed in Jesus. One day they were all gathered together when there was a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm. Whoa! Then what looked like flames appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in other languages, and so they started speaking. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, they came running to see what it was. What's going on? When they saw the believers speaking in their own languages, they were shocked and amazed. Hey, Jesus! They wondered, how can this be? These people are from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages about the wonderful things God has done. What can this mean? Nah, whatever. But others in the crowd didn't believe that it was really a miracle. And thought the believers were just acting oddly. Huh. Then Peter stepped forward and shouted to the crowd, "Hey, all you! Listen carefully, all you! 
He told them that they were not acting strangely, but that this was from God. He reminded them that God said this would happen long ago. Then Peter told them about how Jesus was crucified, but then raised to life again, just as God had said he would be. He told them that Jesus was now in heaven and that God had given the Holy Spirit to them as he had promised. Peter's words changed what the people thought and felt, and they asked, Brothers, what should we do? Peter told them, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Peter continued to preach to the crowd for a long time, and those who believed what Peter said were baptized. 3,000 people were baptized and added to the church that day. Then all the believers listened to the apostles' teaching and practiced what they taught. Hey! They met together in fellowship, shared meals, and prayed together. They were amazed as the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Here you go. Take this. Ah, oh, thank you. They helped those in need. Here, this is for you. Thank you. Worshiped together at the temple every day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy all while praising God and enjoying each other. And each day, God added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Isn't God awesome? He gives us his Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, and to convict us when we sin. Yeah, it's awesome. And just like we saw in the video, the Holy Spirit was able to help the apostles and give them the words to preach to all sorts of different people in different languages. And over 3,000 people were saved in one day. Yeah, that was amazing. And if y'all would like to receive the Holy Spirit today, then just remember your ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior. B, believe. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he came to die for your sins. And C, choose. Choose to accept Jesus into your heart and to commit your life to the Lord. And if you did that today, that is incredible. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And we want to hear from you guys if you did. So go ahead and comment on the video or send Miss Kathy a text or even Miss Catlin if you have their number. Have your parents text them. We want to hear from you guys about that. But in the meantime, we want to go ahead, stay tuned, and we're going to throw it over to the loop. Hey, 1256, it's Darian here. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you this morning. Um, I can't wait to see what Ricky and Jamie have, but also what God's got in store for us. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Tower in the battle You are here with 
these words, that's a Snapchat. Boomerang with the praise in the right back. Man, we hide in the sky, no turn back. If it be our last night, leave it all here. No fear, be clear, this is your year. Let go of anything that isn't God's steer. By seeing with the dream, man, it's so clear. Yeah, so clear. And you know, wherever you go, I'ma stick close, they gon' think we a duo. Bond so tight, hug it out like a sumo. And I never think twice, you the boss of my life, no, you go. And this world not down with us. They can try to limit faith, but it's down to us. Man, love so deep, not a game to us. When the blessing comes down, man, the praise go up.
your fault Steal your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so One and a two and a three. Hang on for the loop. It's getting there. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And I'm Luke. We're so excited to have you here. I'm honored to be here, guys. So since we're talking about worship, we thought that we should bring in a bona fide worship leader to talk to us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Luke. Well, uh, I love music. I love long walks on the beach. I've uh, been doing music all my life. And seven years ago, I became a worship leader. I've been doing it ever since. In fact, two years ago, got together with some close friends and we decided to write some new worship music. And that is how Switch Music started. That is so cool. So since we have you here, I wanted to ask you some questions that I've always wondered about worship. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to answer any questions you've got to the best of my ability. Okay, great. So worship is typically what we call the time at church where we collectively get together and sing songs. So I've seen some people raise their hands and I've seen some people kneel. Is there a correct posture for when I'm singing? 
Yeah, well. yeah, speaking of, are there any uh, new worship postures that we should be aware of, like one, mm -hmm. like one of these? Okay. Or... And should I take singing lessons so I can worship better? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, also, uh, why do we call it worship? Oh, 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 Anne, are we doing it wrong if we sing mostly fast songs but only one slow song? Huh? Eh? Yeah. That's a good one. Am I supposed to be doing a challenge with you guys? Is that yes, why I'm here? Yes, yes. Yeah, but we, I mean, we have a lot of questions about worship. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Look, well, first, worship is a lot more than music. It's about participating in God's story with your whole heart and soul and mind. Okay, but only if we participate with the correct hand motions, right? Where'd you get that idea from? <gasps> you know, the old praise power video. Oh, uh, yeah. What is praise power? <laughs> Judy Joy, and this is Praise Power. You are watching our advanced moves video, so if you haven't already watched our beginner moves, go ahead and eject this tape and put in tape one. Now, you look like you're ready to wow your worship leader with wonder. Let's do this. Building off of that step touch we mastered, let's go ahead and increase difficulty and just wave one arm. Wave your troubles away, that's right. Go ahead and take your free hand, and anytime those lyrics say love, devotion, or heart, just tap your chest. Now close your eyes. Really feel it. Now only close your eyes when you've mastered the first part of this move. Let's build off of that knee pop we learned in the beginner stages. Let's put some juice in this jubilation. Raise those arms in the air. Now make concentric circles towards yourself. Now, this move will take some practice, but we'll create a worship stance that says there's some excitement in my exaltation. Here's a little Judy Joy praise power secret. These moves can be utilized outside the church experience. We're going to take these moves into the world at large. We're getting groceries. And count your blessings. Oh, oh. Scott's got the right idea. Drop to your knees. Thank God for grace. Head to protection. Oh, yeah. Scott's got it. Spread the good news. Put some motion in your devotion and practice these moves until they become second nature. I'm Judy Joy, and this has been Praise Power. Classic. I do oh. not know what that was. Oh, that happens a lot here on this show. Okay, so I agree that worship is more than just singing, mm -hmm. but there's not a perfect posture that you have to get to. Is there a perfect song that we have to sing in order for God to listen? No, no, we worship one God, but there's so much variety in how we worship him. Huh. That's good. Ooh. Oh, look, your hand. Okay, hey. just grab the card. It okay, won't bite. You're safe. It says, this challenge is called New Song, Old Lyrics. Ooh. Choose the lyrics to a popular old praise song, then choose a song style card. You will perform the lyrics with an entirely new tune. Fun. Okay. okay, so this side is song, this side is song style. Okay. Mystery Hand told me earlier. Okay, great. Uh, All right. You go first. Oh, okay, cool. This one and this one. I'll take nice. the rest. Oh, okay. So the song that I got is, uh, oh, I've got the joy, 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 joy. Woohoo! And the style is country. I got this little light of mine in the style of K-pop. Um, I have Jesus Loves Me in the style of death metal. I cannot wait. Let's do it. Yeah! Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's see how this goes, okay? I got the joy, joy, joy. about to happen, it's about to put on. You guys didn't know about no little light of mine, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh my, yeah. okay, yeah. One, two, one, two, three. This little light of mine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine. 
That's the best that this brain trust can come up with, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe speaking of brains, let's talk about the science of worship. I'm gonna try to explain this in the simplest way possible. So scholars and researchers have done tons of study on the brain during worship. Like what happens in our minds when we worship and sing to God. When we listen to music, any music, not just worship music, a lot of our brain is really active, especially the areas that process sound. But also, your brain is active in your left temporal lobe, that's where language happens. And in the right hemisphere, that's where creativity happens. And in your corpus callosum, that's the channel of neuropathways between both hemispheres of your brain. See, there's one level of neuroactivity associated with just listening to music, but there's a whole nother level of activity that happens when it comes to actively participating in or creating together as we do when we're singing. When you look at what happens in a room full of Christians singing praise music, it's incredibly participatory compared to just being at a concert or listening in your car. Everyone who is singing along is contributing to the environment of the room. And that, that whole, we're all in this together, it amplifies the effects that music has on our thoughts and our awareness. And this comes with lots of benefits. First, an increased capacity to process language. Second, a positive state of mind. Third, a higher sense of self-worth and self-esteem. When we worship together, a room full of brains start to create these neurological patterns that are similar to each other. We see this in a brain scan. As people start to contemplate everything that's happening, the lyrics, the singing, the environment of the room, you start to rise and transcend your focus beyond yourself. You go from thinking about yourself and your needs, to your family, to your community, to your city, to your part of the world, to all of humanity, and then ultimately to God. You see, worship steps you into these broader views of reality. This transcendent state is amplified by the music and by everyone doing it together. And because of our social identities, because of the power of music, because of the participation that's happening, it creates such an elevated experience it gives a greater chance for other people to join in and to experience God. So yeah, worship is not just about singing. Worship actually helps us say, it's not about me. Worship unifies us with God and others. Love 
Love your neighbor as yourself. Come on. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart and soul and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Woo. <laughs> yes. yes. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart and soul and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. That was so good! Do you mind if we ask you a couple more questions about worship? I would love that. Yes. Okay. Starting with, what does the word worship mean? Worship actually comes from an old English word, worthship, which just means to give something worth, oh, value, yeah. or to give honor to something. The thing is, with worshiping God, God is already worthy without our worship. So worshiping God is all about just giving him honor mm. every single day. It's about getting up and singing and dancing, celebrating, but it's more than that. Every little thing that you do can be an act of worship if it's done to honor God. Nice. Awesome. That's good. I know that sometimes when people worship, they'll say hallelujah. So what does that mean? Yeah. Hallelujah is just shorthand for everybody praise Yahweh, which is a really important and special word for God. So let's all praise God. Awesome. And so what does it mean to live a life of worship? What a good question. Um, you know, what's funny about that is I think everyone lives a life of worship. It's just a question of what you are worshiping, mm. right? Because I can live my life trying to, just thinking about myself and trying to do good things for me or focused on what my friends think and mm -hmm. trying to please them. Or I can live my life, every single thing that I do, trying to honor God. Yeah. I know that sometimes I seek people's approval maybe more than I do God's approval. That's probably one way that I, that I don't quite live a life of worship. Sometimes even just with busyness of life and everything, mm -hmm. I think I can forget that God is worthy of worship. And nice. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought of that with my brain. That was so I like good. It. Worthy of yeah. worship. <laughs> yeah. So there's this woman and she's at a well. Why is she at the well? Well, this is a time where there's like no running water. I mean like no faucets, no water bottles, no toilets, dark days. Like if you wanted water, which you need to live, you had to sometimes walk miles, carry a bucket, throw it in the well, pull it out with a rope, then carry this water all the way back home to live and do it every single day. <sighs> Only three more. Why is she at the well? Well, she has a need. When she's there, she meets Jesus. And she doesn't really know who he is or why he is talking to her. Like, it's very weird that he would be talking to her. But he is. And I start to talk about worship and what's the right place to worship and where we're supposed to worship. And Jesus basically says, you know, God really doesn't care about those things. What God really wants when we worship is that we would worship him in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? He doesn't really care so much that we're raising our hands and we look good but he cares that our spirit is right and we're worshiping him from the inside out. He cares about the truth. It doesn't matter where you are, when you are, how it looks, or even if you feel like worshiping, that we would worship him in the truth of who he is and that's good all the time. And as he's talking, she starts to recognize who Jesus is. Like he's the Messiah. He's the King of Kings and not only that, He's talking to her. He doesn't make her feel judged or excluded because of who she is or what she's done or what she doesn't know about God. But he makes her feel invited to worship, that she is called to be a part. Because that's who Jesus is. We all have these needs and, and Jesus isn't just here to meet our needs just like this one time, but it's eternal. See, Jesus isn't just a sip of water. He's the living water inside of us, continually refreshing us and meeting our needs and filling us. And because of that, we can't help but be different. Like, look at this lady's response. Like, 
she goes, she realizes who Jesus is for like a half, like very short conversation. And she leaves her water pot behind and she goes and she tells all of her friends about the Jesus she just met. You see, in that moment, her heart and her mind and her soul were transformed and all she wanted to do because of that was worship. Sing about the loop show. <laughs> we talk about worship. And stuff. And worship. That's right. <laughs> More than just singing, living a life, living a life of worship. Living a life of worship starts with getting up, ready and excited to worship God for everything he's done. With a variety of postures, we can thank God and give him the devotion that he deserves. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us, Luke. And for answering all of our questions about worship. But what if we have more questions? Well, this month we are talking all about worship, so we will have many more opportunities to dive in deeper. Yes, and reach out. We love helping you look for answers. Thank you. Oh, do you want to help us sign off? Wait, okay, I know that we said that worship is more than just singing, but for this one, can we sing it? Yes! Uh, yay! Okay. Ready? Enjoy, Enjoy the ride. ride! Worship is putting God first with our heart, soul, and mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what we get to be a part of. We thank you for all of the great things that you've done in our lives, and we just thank you for simply who you are, that you love us deeply. And we know that we can come to you with whatever we have because you are there for us. What I know is that there are some of you who maybe you're here today and this whole idea of worshiping God is new to you because maybe for you, you've had this idea of who God is that is so much different than who he really is because who God is, he is love and he loves you and he wants a relationship with you so much so that he came down to earth in the person of Jesus, right? He became a human being so that he could do life with us, so that God could be with us in person. And that person, Jesus, lived a perfect life. He died a brutal death on the cross for your sins and for mine, so that anybody who puts their trust in him could be saved, could be made new. And maybe you're here today for the first time to put God first with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Because when you do that, everything changes. You become a new person, not just a better person, but a new person. I believe that that's why many of you are here today, to say yes to Jesus for the very first time, to truly worship God for the first time. So if that's you and you wanna say yes to Jesus, to become his follower, to be made completely new, if you wanna give your life to Christ, then simply lift your hand right now. All over the place, people are making that choice to say yes to Jesus today. And we wanna celebrate with you and we want to pray with you. So please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning away from my old life. I'm turning towards you. I worship you with my heart, my soul, and my mind. I put you first. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody, celebrate and make some noise because that's the best choice you could ever make in your life. In that moment, you became a new person. So please tell somebody about it, right? Tell your friend, tell your small group leader, tell your parents that you made the choice to follow Jesus today. Man, that was some good stuff. Worship is one of my favorite things to do. So I wanna challenge you this week. Get out, worship. Remember worship is more than just music and songs. Worship is done in your actions, your everyday actions, actions with your parents and your siblings, the things that you do that you don't even think about doing. So go try something new. Get out, pay attention to the ways that you can worship. Um, follow the link below. Do your small group questions with your parents and your siblings. And remember that all of us, Club 86 leadership, we love you and we miss you and we really can't wait to see you again. See you next week. Bye guys.